Welcome back to the marketplace. In our first story, the disbursement of the 1 billion city stimulus package for small businesses is expected to begin from next week. The National Board for Small Scale Industries has received more than 100,000 applications from business owners following the launch of the program last month. Executive Director of the Board, Kosian Kiai, has been giving details on the disbursement pro uh, process. Here's what she said when she appeared on the business edition of PM Express. One of the most important things for us at NVSSI and my management team and all those who are supporting us is to communicate mm. as often and I think that for the first time in a long time the board which is NVSSI and mm. management we have communicated very far and wide because mm. I realized that one of the hardest things for people is if they don't hear about the process or hear what you're doing there's a lot of assumptions that mm. are made and so as much as possible our goal is to communicate the process communicate where we are communicate what is going on to get people on the same page it's mm. important to communicate and i also think that one of the things is also to make the process as transparent as try as much as possible to use technology so that people realize that there's a process mm. and for once maybe we should see how the process would play out what we've done is that we've decided that there'll be a date or a timeline for closing mm. so 20th of june is what we set mm. um, for now and 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 that's what we're hoping to, so we're not hoping to cap it based on the numbers but really base it cap it on on the dates because we believe that one it's not everyone who's going to uh, mm. benefit it's not everyone who's going to apply and those who apply there might be challenges like I mentioned some of them some there were some cases of fraud or other things so we also need to keep it open and allow people and also if you're talking about the reach that we are talking mm. about we want to reach you can't start today and close it tomorrow mm. you need to give people time from all over to be able to bring their information and for it to be keyed in and it's all a process mm. so how many applications have you uh, received as we, as we speak uh, this so week. as we speak now um, I think the last time I looked at it your dashboard <laughs> your baby <laughs> um, we've looked at I looked at it um, in terms of the number of businesses that have registered mm. or persons that have registered it's about a hundred thousand plus applications since within yeah, who have registered for the process mm. so I'm urging people who are applying that let's take our time and put in the right information and double check it so that when we move to the next stage it's not a challenge and with regards to the funds as I mentioned this June there will be disbursements mm. to start at least the first month. if your business is not registered are you going to get access to the funds if your business is not registered in your micro business because if you pay attention 70% of the Ghanaian economy is a SME, but also almost 70 to 80 percent is in the informal sector and is mm. not registered. But as much as possible, we believe that this program is also a way to support informalizing the informal sector. Let's do three blocks of. Okay, so it's been five days since the new customs management system was enforced at the Tema port, and freight forwarders as well as clearing agents are still struggling to clear their goods. Here are some of the frustrated freight forwarders who spoke to Joy Business earlier. For how many days now, duties have not been paid, revenues have not been raised. Sometimes when you go to some of the, when, sometimes when you go to the offices, their system are not working. They told, they will tell, they will be, be angry with you. Are you listen to me? Is it proposed that government should bring? in a GCNet system. Now GCNet is off. It doesn't even reflect in the universe. So how do you think that's working? 
how do you expect us to work? And now, we should think about the clients. The person who is doing sports is doing. He's bringing the jobs. He's bringing revenue. So if we can't we can hold this, we can't resolve this. That's what I was saying. Well, we're trying to say that, oh, Alex, they should work fast. But now, his net has value. Mm -hmm. so the best thing we're supposed to do is, as soon as possible, we should find a solution. Since Monday, people have paid their duties on Friday, on Thursday. Now they cannot even work. Why? Why is that? At least we should find solutions to everything as soon as possible. So that the clients can be okay, I will be okay, the country will be okay. Because this one is not about politics. It's not about NDC, it's not about MP. It's about the whole country. Because when you pay a duty in the system, it goes to the government. The government uses the duty to at least build the nation. And we are not fighting only for our own benefits. No, we are fighting for the nation. So as we are fighting for the nation, our cry should go out there, they should listen to our cry, and then do something about it. Because, because, because listen, everybody is frustrated. Everybody is frustrated. Because now, it's more or less I am delaying. Because the importer doesn't know that Unipass is not working, or Unipass has a problem. The importer knows he has given you money to work. And you need to deliver. Whether the system is not working or the system is not working, delivery is his problem. And if delivery is not done, then I'm, I'm losing. I am losing. If delivery is not done, I am losing. So please, as soon as possible, where the solution can be done, the solution should be done. Then at least we we'll all have a peace. We we'll all can work. We we'll all can build this country to the highest level. And uh, those were some sentiments of trade forwarders who uh, spoke to the media when the Parliamentary Select Committee on Trade and Industry visited the Tema port yesterday. What has changed today? I believe we can speak on phone to William Ababio, who is a clearing agent. Thanks for your time this afternoon, William. So what has changed since the last time we spoke on Wednesday? Um, uh Unipass has resorted to manual clearance um, at the port currently as I am talking to you. Um, but I can tell you that anger is growing um, at the port as I am talking to you. So um, there has been no improvement. And what I can see now is that there is nothing like systemic work at the port. And uh, what is going on is manual clearance. So um, before you do examination mm. of yeah, something like that, you, it must be done manually. So there is no system work as, we are, as I'm talking to you now. Okay. Uh, if you could just uh, expand more on what uh, uh, clearing goods manually means then for you guys, because uh, we're expecting that things will be automated, things will be smoother, things will be faster. So what sort of delays is it causing? Well, now the uh, first you um, engage in the system, that is the GCNet system, and the speed of clearance that we used to have mm. is no longer there. Now we have resorted to using um, uh, a paper when it was paperless. And so the situation at the port now is very, very terrible. Everybody is angry at the port as I am talking to you. There is no improvement. The situation is very bad and we have been resorted to because um, they have been caught with time and importers and trade forwarders are mounting intensive, um, intense pressure on them. Mm. Now they have resorted to using manual, to, um, a manual of, of, of clearance instead of the system that we used to have. Okay, and what are you hearing from uh, the current managers uh, as to when things are going to be fixed? Well, we are told that things are going to be fixed from next week going. But my brother, as I am talking to you, if, if we foresee next week, we don't, I, I, I don't actually think that things, well, I do not want to be um, a, a bad, or I do not want to be a bad player. Mm. But I can tell you that next week, from what we are seeing this week, I don't think there will be any improvement um, in the coming days. I do not know the magic which they are going to engage. I do not know what they are going to do. But from where I am um, standing and the situation...
that is we are that we are experiencing at the port currently. I don't think next week things are going to improve. And, and I believe that this is uh, so much of an inconvenience for you. Help our audience understand how much uh, this is costing you. The delays, I mean. No, now. Um, importers are going to bear a lot of cost because containers are going to demolish and cars will be going to rent. Shipping lines will not waive or will not waiver containers or rent for you or demolish for you because the system did not work. No, they won't do that. They will still charge you with the demolish. And so the time which we used to clear at the port have increased now if you would use um let me say one week to clear a container right. now it can take you more than that and the demolishes the huge the astronomical amount of money that we are importers are going to pay as demolish is huge so we do not know what the authorities are doing and it's like they are stuck and they they, 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 they just don't know what to do. And so um, the, the, the inconvenience at the port, my brother, is too much. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, William Abebio, clearing agent there, giving us a bit of uh, situation over there. They are having to clear their goods manually, and he says that clearing agents, uh, freight forwarders, are getting frustrated. Let's speak with the PR manager of uh, Ghana Link Network Services, Norvan Aqua Hayford, who uh, when we spoke the last time, I showed that things were uh, going to be fixed. So uh, thanks for being here with us, Norvan. What is happening? Um, thank you very much, um, Daryl. And uh, of course, I, I just listened to William Abibu and the issues that he has uh, raised mm. with regards to what is happening at the port. But Daryl, we need to separate the issues. Now, Ghana Link are the technical partners for the ICONS, that is the new integrated customs management system. Yeah. It will interest you to know, Daryl, that this particular system, as of today, as I speak to you, as of the close of work yesterday, have been able to clear bill of entries, that is the BOEs, over 3,550. So how do you explain, so saying, uh, how do you explain that? I'm that saying that on authority over 3,550. Now, what is happening today at the port? And I think that we, we all need to help each other. I want to say that we all need to be calm at this point. And I'm happy that when he, he uh, we listened to some of the tapes that you played, it had to do with the old system. You know, people who had gone through the old system and the payments that they have done in terms of payment of duties and what arrangement has been put in place to help them you know, clear their goods from the port. Mm. So on that mm -hmm. basis, I will tell you that as far as the ICOMS is concerned, there is no problem. Anybody who has gone through... You know, it's, it's hard to believe that when you say there's no problem. So for instance, now we're hearing that they are having to do stuff manually. I know that you provide that technical is, assistance to ICOMS, but you are not saying anything really if you tell me that you've been able to clear goods. Because we're hearing from the traders, we're hearing from the freight forwarders, they are saying there are challenges and Daryl, and I'm saying that if you're talking about things being done manually, and I try to explain to you that there are two separate issues and we need to look at it. And that's why I first started by telling you that the ICOMs for fresh declarations, there's a difference between fresh declarations and those who might have done payment in the old system, which was shut down on Monday. Okay, so help so us understand this. Those who made payments now, so with the old system are the ones facing the challenges? I'm, you come again? Those who made payments with the old system are those facing challenges. Is that what you're saying? They are the ones that a new flow chart and new arrangements have been done for them to be able to clear their goods from the port. So that yeah. new arrangement is effective now? It's been effective since Monday. So why, since why Monday, are there challenges now? When you then? go to the long, listen, if you've done your payment and you need to go for release, let me talk of release, which means that, of course, you've done payment, you have all your documentation to prove, and so you need to go for release. What is happening right now is that those people need to go to the shipping line. The shipping line sends an email to the customs officials, and then they go to the customs okay. officials at the command center sure. where they sign the documents so they can go for their documents so, so what? that has nothing to do daryl excuse me let me just land it has nothing to do with um the icons or the unipass as you may want to call it okay you i understand yeah. so we need to first try to you know separate the issues 
let people understand what is happening. And that's why I told you that since Monday when the ICOMS, you know, was uh, went live, mm. we've been able to mm. claim over 3,550. That is fresh declarations. Okay, so people with more declarations so, are facing I mean, challenges. Part, so finally, today, finally, no. Novan, because we have to go, finally, what what should they do? Those who are facing challenges right now, who are, who are having to do it manually, what would you advise them to do in order to get things running smoothly? No, I mean, I, there's an arrangement that has been put in place. So if you, you know have about your, it, your, 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 otherwise... your, your payments, you've done your payment, what you need to do is to first go to the shipping line, get your release from them. They will send an email to the customs officials. When the email hits the customs officials, they would from there then minute on your document, then you can go and get your things gated out, be it from the MPS terminal or be it from the uh, Golden Jubilee or if it's in any of the bonded uh, uh, terminals that we have here at the port. Right. And so people, and, and you know, one of the issues that is also coming up is that some people have not even done registration in the ICOMs, but they expect to use the system, even okay. in the old system. Okay. You first of all need to register and get all your documents we, we really need to, uh, go. to allow you to do your work. We really need to go. Uh, whatever it is, it, it appears that communication is not going down too well and people don't really understand what is happening. So I guess it's a problem that has to be fixed. Well, let's turn to other news now. Contractors working on the Eastern Railway line from Tema to Impakadan are required to provide a new date for completion of work. The line which is expected to join Burkina Faso is about 60% complete. The contractors, AFCON Limited, reported some positive cases uh, as one of the project sites, a situation which has brought the entire work to a halt. According to the Minister for Railway Development, Joe Gatti, government has requested a new completion timeline for the project. All right, we, we don't have that story, but in a matter of months, Ghana is likely to disallow the importation of cars older than 10 years to encourage international companies, including Volkswagen AG to set up local plants. The new law also provides import duty rebates for companies that manufacture or assemble cars in Ghana, but it will take effect six months after the manufacturing or assembling of new vehicles in the country begins under a special government program meant to draw investment. Uh, take a listen to this report by Bloomberg. Volkswagen, Nissan, Toyota Motor Corporation, Suzuki Motor Corporation, and Renault SA are among automakers weighing the local assembly of vehicles in the country, where used cars make up about 70% of vehicle imports. Ghana is seeking to become a car manufacturing hub for West Africa, a region with more than 380 million people. Bloomberg reports the import restrictions could cost the government as much as $143 million in customs revenue in the first three years after implementation, according to parliamentary documents. The law, signed by President Sanar Kufuado on April 30, also bans the importation of cars which have been involved in accidents which dealers bring in and repair to provide even cheaper options to consumers. The ban on these will take effect from October, regardless of their date of manufacture. Now, uh, contractors working on the railway line from Tema to Impakadana, as we have been reporting, are required to provide a new date for completion of work. Let's listen to uh, Joe Gatti, the Railways Minister, explain uh, issues related to reported cases of COVID-19 that has somewhat stalled the project. From the way they are working, they believe that they can finish in August of this year. Now, at that time, they are done about a little over 50 percent of the work. But they had also done quite a bit of the formation. The formation is what is done before the track is put on it. In, in, in um, January and February, what they did was that they spent a lot of time uh, working on the barge and so on. And they, in fact, launched the barge, which will allow them to do the bridge over water. If you are going to the water region just around Japan, you see that they worked on both sides of the road. But unfortunately, they were affected by this virus. What is happening is that this morning, the Ghana Railway Development Authority met with them. And we've asked them to give us uh, their proposal uh, for their new timelines. But like all the contractors that we work with have said to me that construction of that nature is not like a, a car that you can just switch it on and off. When you demobilize to remobilize, it takes time. And so we've lost significant time. And for those who say that it will be completed in August, please, that is not the situation. In December, they said it will be completed in August. Even the, what you are wearing, your nose mask you are wearing, must show you that the world has changed. We have all experienced this unfortunate incident that has changed our world completely. And also, they also had 
people who had the virus. So they had to stop working. And so Ghana Railway Development Authority will sit down with them. And when the new figure comes out, when the new date comes out, we'll make it known to the people of Ghana. Turning to food matters now, the General Secretary of the Agric Workers Union, Edward Karwe, is urging that the lapses with food, the food production value chain are fixed in order to control the hikes in food prices. The prices of food commodities have increased over the past few months, although there is sustained supply. Much of that has been blamed on the recent lockdown, but analysts are also pointing to other contributory factors. It will be a free flow of what is produced to the consumer. And we have, over the years as a country, failed to address these stru structural uh, you know, challenges. Mm -hmm. So that is why you continue to find out that if you talk about the northern region, there is so much maize in the northern region. Yet poultry farmers down within the Accra cannot even get that particular mm -hmm. maize. Mm -hmm. You talk about watermelon in the Volta region, mm -hmm. yet the price in Accra is prohibitive. Mm -hmm. It's because there is there's supposed to be a smooth connection between the production to the consumer. Mm. Now, who, how does, how do we bring watermelon from Volta region to Accra? By what mode of transport there is a disorganization of these different parts of agricultural production? Mm. You know, production is not complete until it reaches the final consumer. Right. And we are not paying particular attention to that simple theory, which we now need to practicalize to make sure that whatever is produced, mm. we quickly move it to where it is most needed. Right. We don't have those structures in place, mm. or even where they are, they are disorganized. Right. For instance, we are talking about fuel prices going down. Mm. That does not necessarily mean that transport prices will go down. Mm. That does not mean that if you are a transporter and you are hiring a vehicle either from Accra or from Volta region, for instance, to convey the watermelon to Accra, mm. it is going to be cheaper. Right. It will not necessarily be mm. just because fuel prices have come down. Mm. It will not necessarily be. Mm. You need to make conscious efforts and make those structural challenges addressed. addressed. That is it for the marketplace uh, this afternoon. Do join us on Business Live. We will be having the conversation about the ban on imports of vehicles that are 10 years old when assembling plants begin uh, production or assembling their cars here in Ghana. We'll have that conversation at 5 o'clock. My name is Daryl Kwao. Thanks for watching the marketplace. Uh, more news on our website, myjoonline.com forward slash business.